well, I think there's a lot of things they did wrong. Um, I, I think they learned their lesson with that, with the Zoom. Ha- however, they didn't particularly do, do very well with the UI on the 360, which seemed to treat everybody like they were three years old. Uh, I briefly glimpsed it uh, maybe about four or five months ago. Uh, that was probably the last time I switched the Xbox 360 on before it had an unfortunate accident. Um, and it, it, the, the UI and that, the whole sort of Xbox experience was it was trying to be a um, it, it almost tried trying to be a, a Nintendo DS type experience, but it was sort of aimed towards somebody that was a lot younger than the audience, I think, which are enjoying the Xbox 360 console, particularly by Gears of War or Halo. Um, and it, it just didn't sit right. At least PlayStation 3 was boring and generic. It serves its purpose. Um, that was just my opinion. But um, probably the console topic is uh, one that uh, Roy and uh, Rusty probably aren't uh, too hot on talking about because uh, it's not their main area of interest. So uh, we'll just have a quick discussion about any gadgets that we've got over the Christmas period. All the uh, DRM, little DRM boxes. I mean, think about what happens now is loads of the things that used to be uh, general purpose uh, devices or computers, you know, you can access it, you can put your extra RAM inside and, uh, you know, you can change drives and everything. And that's changing to consoles, to phones, uh, to uh, MP3 players. Yes, exactly. So, and then in just about all of them we get DRM. I mean, even the uh, Android shops and all, all these things, you know, they have yeah. restrictions on things you can do. And that's quite a concerning trend, you know, we move away from the desktop, we have more and more Linux in more places, but to get but some the of the computer so- is going to become a game console type market. Yeah, hopefully not, but maybe, maybe there will be options, you can just choose one of the two, but I, I think this will convert somewhere. I mean, even TV, I mean, in the past you could just watch TV. Now, anytime you watch TV, you're being tracked. Uh, that's one of the, in, well, I suppose that's a consequence of going digital, is that you get all this extra features not to you but also to the person delivering you the content so you're being watched you're being advertised to you can get targeted ads that you're not so interested in you've been being profiled your data is being sold in bulk to some advertiser somewhere um, and that happens with phones increasingly too and other legislation so when you carry a phone you're basically being tracked by someone as well it, it, as it? long as it's being sub- Sufficiently anonymized. I don't inherently have. Oh, it isn't anonymized that. though. But the problem is, like you're saying, yeah. not only is it not always anonymized, but sometimes even when they make attempts to anonymize it, because of the fact that it isn't their personal information, yeah, they don't really care about the security breach, and that's the unfortunate problem there. Well, I think there is increasingly this tendency. If you encrypt the email, they assume you could be doing something wrong, and if you try, if I go to a shop here and I do try this and I say I'd like to buy a phone without giving my details, they refuse that and say, well, it's against the policy. Now, this basically means any, and I've heard stories, I mean, basically, even if you give the details, they will phone your house to verify that you are the person who holds the phone. So they really want to know who exactly owns which phone, even though they could probably just guess based on all kinds of things you do, like phone calls and, and things. Well, and th- this is honestly one of the reasons I think more and more uh, going forward, people are going to be setting up things like a Google Voice number or some equivalent where they have a number where they can just block stuff, um, where it's it's a web-based, anonymized number. That's one of the features I love about Google Voice, that I, I give that number to people, and if I, don't wanna, if I don't want these people to be able to call me, I just put that number in the spam list, and when they call it, as far as they're concerned, the number's no longer in service. But, you, you know, there's a lot of fuss made of the uh, data and people monitoring and being used in advertising, but we've always been subjected to this. It's just, since it's become computerized, it's become easier for this data to be passed around. If you imagine going back, say, 10, 20 years, where literally your only means of communication was uh, a telephone or the postal service, people did exactly the same thing there. You'd apply for a catalogue and then that catalogue, Argos or whatever, would come through the post and they would sell your details. But in smaller stuff. volumes, and you'd probably be watched yeah. only if you were on a certain list, but they had reason for suspicion and now would be in bulk. And the th- I actually miss that age because in that age, 90% of the time, when you were getting something, it was because you had done something to imply that you fit in this niche. So why it was advertising and it was junk mail and we could fill a our spare bedroom with the junk mail we got in a year, it was at least stuff we were interested in. Like, I don't mind that Tiger Direct and Think Geek and places like, and, you know, even BBC send me their 
catalog or magazine every so often because I actually have an interest in that stuff. Nine times out of ten, I don't like most of the stuff in it, but occasionally I'm like, oh yeah, okay. But that's something I'm interested in. It's different when it's this mass email harvest list. It's like, oh, well, the conversion rate's down to one in a thousand, so now we need to send to 10,000 more people, one million more people, one billion. No, the conversion rate's going down because you're sending more and more junk to more and more people who aren't interested. Yeah, I, I think that's just a, that's just a result of the, the computing world that we live in now. Like I say, I think these methods always existed. I, I remember all, all when I was younger, I think I was about 12, 13 years old when I had a paper out, and you see the notices on the door, no junk mail. Um, no flyers, that that type of thing, and the principles behind it have always been here, and it's just now a lot simpler to do it. But it, conversely, I think now it's a lot simpler to block it because instead of having a plethora of leaflets being pushed through your airbox, which end up in the shredder, you've got uh, ability to block your your emails, only allow certain addresses to to send a mail to you. So uh, I think it's a double-edged sword, and I don't think it's such a bad thing when you look at a lot of the services that are offered, which rightly or wrongly make their money from this type of selling of details. But having said that, had they not got that facility to make that money, they wouldn't offer the service in the first place. If you look at some of the, I'm trying to think of some of the, uh, Facebook, for example. Now, if Facebook wasn't making money with its advertising, etc., there wouldn't be a Facebook service. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing depends on whether you like Facebook, but I'm sure there's uh, a few million users, a few billion users, that would argue that uh, Facebook's the greatest thing since sliced bread, maybe not aware of the the implications of using it, but are quite happy that their details are sold in order to get the free service that is uh, Facebook. So, uh, well, I, and I would love or hate Facebook, I would honestly argue the way Facebook does advertising is more the right approach, but the problem is it requires the people doing the advertising to understand the advantage Facebook gives them because they can literally, you know, target people who only listen to music X of between the ages of blah and blah within 100 miles of their store if they want to. Those are going to be more expensive targets, but it's going to be a high conversion rate. Uh, it, it's when you get people on Facebook who have the spammer mentality of, okay, I have to, I have $100 and I need to get my message out to 100,000 people to get my quotas. Then that's when it becomes spamish. But and and the other thing is as well we have like these there's a lot of this mail now direct advertising by proxy, and what I mean by that is for example I've just uh, I bought a book off a uh, Kindle ebook um, recently called Dark Matter um, really fantastic story excellent book I finished reading it in about a day because uh, it was so good I couldn't put it down and when I finished reading it, at the end of the ebook on my Kindle device it gives the option to tweet it now I really wanted to send out the tweets to say this is a really great book please buy it and with the way the Kindle works, it includes a link to the Amazon's page, which has the book for sale, which then put me off doing it because I thought, well, anybody reading my tweets and anybody who's following me will you know, probably not like the idea that I'm selling, sending them an advert. Which, uh, but really, what I'm doing is saying that this is a great, uh, a great product that I, I thought was worth the four ninety nine I paid for it. Um, so, so there's there's that as well, and it's uh, it's made it very difficult. I mean, I personally boycott anything which will be pushed to me via advertising that didn't ask for it. And if the mainstream consumer did the same thing, I think a lot of this spamming would probably dry up once there was no money. No, 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 it wouldn't, because they did a study a few years back, and it's estimated the return rate on spam stuff is less than one in twenty-seven million. You have to send it to twenty-seven million individuals to get a response. And if that hasn't stopped it, nothing will. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's what I, I'd probably concede to that, Rusty. But I, I think the ethos, though, is yeah, if companies are aware that their products would be looked at less favorably if they're put on these sort of mediums to sell them, mm. then well, I think maybe the well, is, we all, all of us, already have that opinion. And think of how many seminars there are hosted by companies like eBay and media marketing things that say, "Oh no, what you do is you get this automated software that tweets Facebooks and yada yas." on the hour, every hour, the same things. And that builds your web presence. And there's people who do it. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, well, moving moving on from the spam, um, I don't know if you've got any other topics that uh, you want to cover, Rusty. I'll go over to you because you're the uh, 
you've been left out so far in terms of introducing anything else. Is there, is there uh, well, I'm surprised you didn't. Did this not make the feed in the uh, UK like it did in the States that uh, 